Hi, this is a prototype version of my robot. What I want my robot to do is shoot a ball into a cup. In order to do that, I need to figure out the yaw angle, which is the horizontal angle. I need to figure out the pitch angle, which is the vertical angle. And then my hand can shoot. In this problem, I'm going to show you how to calculate the yaw angle. This is my target. This distance between the target and the cannon I'll call D. And this angle over here, this full angle I'll call alpha. What I need is my distance D and alpha. In order to do that, I need more information. Luckily, I have my two ultrasonic sensors, which can detect the target location and give me some more information. This distance between the ultrasonic sensors is B. It's a constant and it won't change. The ultrasonic sensor sends out sound waves to locate the target and when it hits the target it bounces back. Knowing the velocity of sound and measuring the time it calculates the distance. And then the ultrasonic sensor sees something like this. So an ultrasonic sensor sees in pockets, so the ultrasonic sensor may not see it over the target if it's over here, but it will see it if it's over here even though it's farther out. Oh yeah, I'm also going to use triangle. Since the ultrasonic sensor only tells me the distance, not the location, I'm going to use two ultrasonic sensors instead of one, which you see on my the robot prototype over here, in order to triangulate the target location if it was right here or wherever. So this distance I'll call A. And this distance I'll call C. And then also know that this distance over here is F. This angle is beta. This angle is theta. The reason why I have these two, I'm showing you these two angles is because if I can find both of these angles, I can add them up and then use that and laws of cosines to calculate my distance and my angle alpha. And this is the middle midway point which I'm going to use. So now I'm going to start solving the equation. First thing I'm going to solve is beta even though I can solve theta first. Cosine. Sine of beta is equal to B divided by 2 divided by F, which is equal to B over 2 divided by F over 1, which is equal to B over 2 times 1 over F, which is equal to B over 2 F. I'm going to 
that's all for beta. Beta is equal to arc cosine b over 2f. Now they have my beta. I'm going to calculate my theta using this large triangle of ABC. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of theta. C square minus A square minus B square is equal to negative 2AB cosine theta. A divided negative 2AB on both sides. This cancels out that. So now I'm going to take our cosine of both sides. Theta is equal to arc cosine of c square minus a square minus b square divided by negative 2ab, which is also equal to theta. I don't like this negatives in the front, so I'm going to multiply this by negative 1 over 1. And not negative 1 over 1, but negative 1 over negative 1 because anything divided by itself is equal to 1. Theta equals to arc cosine of a squared plus b squared minus c squared divided by negative 2ab. I think you made a mistake there. Can you look again, please? Sorry, there's not a negative sign over there. Is that divided by 2 alpha b? Or is that 2 ab? 2 ab. Please fix that a. That looks like 20 b. Can do advanced math, but they have a hard time with alphabet. You can. So now that I have my theta, I'm gonna count, I'm gonna say that epsilon is equal to. Oops, that's a B. distance. Can you show on the picture which one's epsilon now? This complete angle. Now d square is equal to a square plus f square minus 2a f cosine Take square root of both sides and you have your distance. Now I'm going to solve for alpha. Is that d square or just d right now? Can you remove that square? It doesn't look like you marked it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now that you have that, I'm going to. Calculate my alpha. Wait a second. When I look over here, alpha is the complete angle. But what I'm really solving for right now is this angle shaded red. 
I'm looking at this using lots of parallelogram. This angle beta is the same angle as this. So we're not solving for alpha really right now. We're solving for delta and then we can solve for alpha. Can you label delta and red then? Cancel out with that. Now I'm going to take our cosine to both sides. Delta is equal to arc cosine a square minus d square minus f square divided by negative 2df. Which, I don't like the negative sign in the front, so I'm going to multiply this by negative 1 over negative 1, which is equal to 1. So, delta is equal to arc cosine d squared plus f squared minus a squared divided by negative, or not negative, 2 d. This is the answer. So it looks like the minus is attacking the A. <laughs> now that we have our delta, I'm going to say that I'm going to solve for alpha. Alpha is equal to delta plus beta. I know it's beta because I'm using laws of parallelograms. Now that I'll solve the problem, I'm going to check if anything is affecting. As change if I move it over to the right. So if the target is over here, this goes like this, this goes like this, this is A, this is C, this is B, and this is the cannon distance, D. B is still unaffected. Actually, looking at this, I don't see how B can change in any way because it's using a different triangle completely to calculate. I mean, beta, not B. It's using a different triangle completely to calculate it. So, it's using this triangle. It's using that, or those two sides of a triangle to calculate itself. And I'm using the sine cosine tangent, so I don't need a third. So they don't change in any way. So now I'm gonna check if alpha will change in any way. First, I'm going to check if this will become zero. A and B would always be positive because the target won't be inside the ultrasonic sensor or on top of it because then it wouldn't see it or not function. Now, the C wouldn't ever be approach zero, never will be zero. So, so on the top, so theta is still won't change at all. 
epsilon is just adding to angles, distance. A and F won't change. Minus 2 A F cosine of epsilon. It could be at a point that D is equal to square root of A square plus F square if, we, if epsilon is 90. But that still won't change it. Delta is still okay. And alpha is still fine. So I believe no matter how far I move this, nothing will change except the only thing that's changing is the angle epsilon. If it if the target approaches over here, then it will be a problem, but the ultrasonic sensor won't even see that. So I won't have to worry about it. But there is one special case where the arches... What if the ultrasonic is up higher instead of so much lower on the right? Can you show if it's going to be okay? Like your little circle, can you move it up a little bit? The far right one? This one you yeah. like this? Yes. Huh, is that going to be okay? Will I check? Can you draw a better circle on this side because I I don't think it will show very well. So here's the cannon. Okay. Here are the two ultrasonic sensors. I'll move them up a little bit. And the target is over you. That's fine. Can you show if, that, if that's going to be okay or not? First of all, I need to mark my labels. This is A, C, B, F, D. I'm going to check. Beta will not change no matter what. I'm sorry, where is beta? So where is epsilon, as you're saying? Well, this over here now is theta. So epsilon is the total of these two angles. Okay. Our distance is still calculated. This is still just fine. Delta is still fine. And we solve for alpha. But there's this one special case when the... So everything is just fine. But there is this one special case. I'm going to use a completely different pad color now. Use green. Green works. Ultrasonic sensors, and here's the cannon. In reality, this is actually unlikely to happen, but I still need to have it accounted for. What happens if something like this happens? This is the base, this is F. This is beta. 
This is Theta. This is Delta. And this is also this Beta over here. Is also over here. This is distance A, C, and this is distance B. <coughs> Well, beta still has the two lengths it requires, so it's still just fine. So, beta is still calculating the same. Theta is still okay. Epsilon is still fine. Is distance still fine? Wait a second, no. Distance is not okay because we, when we calculated it, we are using this angle over here. But what we really need is this angle to calculate our distance, which will affect our calculations completely. So apparently I'm going to have to use an if statement, which I was trying to avoid. If, I'm going to put it up here. Well, apparently I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that epsilon is equal to beta plus theta when beta plus theta is less than or equal to 180. I'm going to say that epsilon is equal to 360 minus uh, in parentheses beta plus theta when beta plus theta is greater than 180 if we use this if condition it will make sure that we get the right angle if it's Make sure if this is greater than 180, and it is, that it uses this angle. But if this theta over here is less than 180 degrees, it won't actually, it will use the other, this angle over here, not this greater than 180. So knowing that, that allows epsilon to be calculated properly in what we need, and distance. And when we calculate delta, it's still okay, and alpha is still okay. We went over everything to use for the logs of cosines for the horizontal angle. Hope you like my presentation.